Hi, today we're looking at doing aquarium tank photography, small fish, amphibians, things like that. Very simple, you have two tanks. One, your foreground tank where your subject's going to go and the second tank is your background. And you might think to yourself, well, why not just put a little bit of coloured cardboard there just behind the front tank, that could be your background. I've tried that, a bit of coloured cardboard has a tendency to look like a little bit of coloured cardboard. You have to put it at a huge distance before it goes sufficiently out of focus so it's diffused and starts to look reasonable. And the further back you take it, the bigger it has to get. And it just looks far more natural if you put a second tank behind the first one and this you fill with murky water. This has to be crystal clear, but the second tank can be very, very dirty water, but it gives it a lot more depth to the picture looks a lot more realistic so you just put a bit of dirt in swirl it around a bit that's that's about perfect one of the biggest problems you have is reflections so we have to use black cardboard and if we put that just underneath whoops just underneath the front tank it cuts out any reflections from this white area in front of the glass anything you're going to put into this front glass has to be absolutely spotless just to form some sort of base now here we're using the Olympus Micro Four third system this is the 60mm macro lens unfortunately there's no writing around the front element some lenses do, they have white writing telling you it's an f2.8 lens and what brand it is and if you've got a lens like that you've got to cover it up with tape either that or paint it out but I'm assuming you wouldn't want to paint it out so you just have to put black tape there otherwise that writing will appear as a reflection in the glass almost certainly one of the biggest problems you have is reflections so we're using a big sheet of black cardboard here with the lens just poked through the middle of it and you can see I've pushed the lens through the cardboard but that's left me with lots of bit of white bits of cardboard from the other side so I've got to cover those up so what I've done is put lots of insulating tape around the hole to hide the white cardboard that's behind the black cardboard and it can be any any color you like so long as it's black sometimes you don't see the reflections when you're taking the pictures you don't see them until you look at them on your computer screen afterwards but uh, it's always a problem with tank photography. The other thing you could do is hang a sheet of black velvet off a, a rail, just draping that down. Cleaning the glass, that's endless. You're constantly cleaning the glass. Another problem you will encounter is air bubbles. You've just filled that up, the water coming out the hose pipe is full of oxygen and for the next 24 hours, air bubbles will constantly appear. So you're actually better off leaving it for 24 hours or more, 48 hours ideally, for the air bubbles to dissipate. The only way I've found around that is to fill up some jerry cans with water, let that settle for 48 hours and then pour that in. So the oxygen has already dissipated and that works relatively well when we've been out on site doing it rather than in the back garden. When it comes to lighting, I prefer to do it with natural ambient light, but you can use flash and your first idea might be to put two flash guns up at 45 degrees just to the side of the tank again to avoid the reflections of the the flash guns but it's actually much better to use a single flash gun and position it above the tank that's the the direction the light would be coming into the water and it looks far far more natural like that you've got to have the flash either on a cable and this is a TTL cable so the, the flash would be automatic or on some sort of remote control to fire the flash gun so that's it that's how you set up for tank photography now you've just got to get your subject 
and put it in the front tank and a little bit of vegetation but keep it to the absolute minimum the vegetation will break up you'll get bits in the water which will be a constant problem you can put as much vegetation in the back as you like but in the small tank at the front keep it limited well, the very first picture has a green paper background and it really just doesn't look right whereas that picture is with the second tank behind and it gives it far more depth to the picture so we're starting off by looking at the smooth newt or common newt you do need a license to be handling and catching newts I had a license one year and a different year worked with a, an ecologist who had permanent licenses for them this is the Pellmate newt and it was when we were doing them with the ecologist that we had to carry the jerry cans full of water because we didn't have a tap and we had to do it on site with the ecologist and this is the great crested newt notice the settings that the creatures are in as simple as possible vegetation kept to a minimum also approached the water board on one occasion and they supplied us with a big range of freshwater fish this is a signal crayfish I have done the freshwater crayfish as well but you also have to have a license for that and an eel you can imagine the tank had to be considerably bigger two very large tanks for this and also for pike as well and thanks for watching